2012, I believe it's 2012, uh, Chevy Impala uh, with the 360 in this. And as you can see, I got the coolant pressure tester set up. So obviously I got a coolant leak. So if you're wondering where the leak is coming from, the leak is coming from radiator. You won't be able to see. It always seems to uh, leak on one of the tanks. It's either the driver's side tank or the passenger tank, whichever which ones. If you pay attention to where the tank welds up to, you know, the aluminum, then you'll see it creeping down that's mostly where it leaks out at so i'm gonna set up on a tripod and just start going on a town and i don't believe i had to do one in the three six is always like the three nine or the three five so the summer process could be like all right you two first things first you're doing a voiceover so i could of course i couldn't do everything outside i wanted this to be planned so that way it can be straightforward for me so uh you can see i took off the engine cover and the reason i did that is because that's that upper strut mount uh, there's only one of them on like the uh, traditional two strut mounts, but it's been a while since they used that two style. So using one, uh, a couple bolts on it. Uh, the bracket itself is two 15 millimeter bolts and one 13. Two long bolts on the other side of the engine are uh, 15, milli 15 millimeters. So one going through the uh, the mount and then one uh, on the other side on the self on the engine block. Don't worry about the one on the engine block. Just do what I did and flip it up. You know, really had to do too much and then like I said uh, on the bracket side of the stuff it's two 15 millimeter bolts and then one 13 so while I get that cracking I'm gonna go ahead and um spark my L up y'all know I don't do no voiceover without no L that's untraditional of me to not do so so we're gonna follow tradition and I don't talk clear and loud as I can keep the profanity down as usual so um next i am i want to stop saying um 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 next uh there's a secondary air injection uh pump not taking out the pump it's just a hose for it so you see that little hose set up with the little filter thingy on it or the silencer that's maybe what it is it looks like a silencer so take that off and um those just you press the tab on plastic tabs on it on the uh, hose itself and it'll separate you know what the, what I'm talking about and then um, after that next mind you my order is real sloppy so don't worry about it just go with the flow I'm taking off there's a bracket that's like a metal pipe that's in front of the cooling fans you can't miss it miss it clear as day it's a 15 millimeter long bolt that goes through the cylinder head so you're gonna take off uh, that bolt and um, you want that uh, that pipe to be uh, movable, not flexible, but like movable if it needed to be moved. So I'm going to take my puff. So that was the bolt. Next, what I'm doing is, I guess I was for a second, I was fiddling with the other hose that's connected to the secondary air injection pump, but I like to move forward on things that, you know, take me a little longer, plus it don't seem like it's all that necessary. So I'm taking off, I mean, as of right now, no. So I'm taking off, uh, there are two uh, brackets that keep like the, the upper mounts for the radiator, basically. Uh, but this one is full of cooling fans, though. So I believe it's for the cooling fans. Whatever. So take those off. There's one on each side, left side, right side. And uh, like I said, it's 10 millimeter bolt. And you probably can't see it from here, but you should have visually an idea of which hell bolt I'm taking off. You get what I'm saying? Alright, let me get my puff in. You know, hold on. Alright, so there's another plastic bracket that's in the middle. That is a 10 millimeter. And I guess that must probably help keep space in between a radiator and the uh, radiator fans and a radiator maybe I could be wrong I don't know but it looks useless who cares just make sure you put it back so after I get those two mounts off upper mounts for the cooling fans mount slash bracket thank you majig um I guess I'm spraying up uh the clip the horseshoe clip for the um transmission cooling lines that go into the radiator taking off the upper one because there's a 10 millimeter bolt on the um that keeps the cooling fans in i can't get to it because that line is in a way that top line 
So I'm picking it out. If you can use something real thin, a pick or a, a real tiny flathead screwdriver, does, I'm using a precision screwdriver because I'm working mobile. So when I work mobile, my tools might be limited or I might just got some okie dokie to use and that's what the hell I use, some okie dokie, but it worked. Make sure you don't use your horseshoe clips because if you can't find it, um, then you will be in the help me section. Um, Dorman got like a pack in AutoZone or Advanced Auto Parts or whatever your parts store, you will be in that section. So now I got access, the line is out the way, I got access to the 10 millimeter bolt. I'm taking that one off and then on the opposing side there is another 10 millimeter bolt. And once you get that bolt off, the radiator, you don't have to worry about anything at the bottom because it just, uh, it just, it has like a slot at the bottom that it actually rests in. So once you get the two upper bolts off, you can be able to like lift it up and it'll pop up. And let me mute my phone because I got messages going on, hold on. And um, yeah, I'm on the opposing side, so get that off. Let me take my puff. I'm glad I got a little in between that I can go in, you know what I mean? Stink my puff and hold on. Now, this job ain't tedious, it ain't hard, it's tight. That's what it is, it's tight. So, you can deal with the tightness and you Gucci because I said you're gonna be Gucci. Oh, too, after I get this boat out. I believe that I'm gonna start taking off the connector uh, for the two uh, radiator fan motors, both sides, left and right, there's a connector. Be careful because I almost felt like I was gonna pull off my fingernail and I grow my nails and it be hurt. That's why it's not good to have long nails, see? That's why I'm good not have long nails when working on cars though. So, got it off and then there's uh, those pushing, not those pushing clips, but those clips um, that wedge and like that little, you know, those hold those wedgeable clips basically. Um, get those out and um, like wire, tie, setup, clip, whatever. You know what I'm talking about? Separate it off the, uh, the, the radiator. I mean, the cooling fans. I'm sorry. Fan shroud, whatever you want to call it. Separate them from the cooling fans because if you don't separate them, that will prevent you from getting the cooling fans out. And mind you, that metal pipe in a way. And I had you move that boat. Makes sense now. So you got enough from to get that out because that pipe is in a way more more than anything for the cooling fans. Oh, take off your upper radiator hose. You need to get that off to get to the um to get the uh, radiator out because you want it to come. It don't come straight up. It comes out at like an angle. I never took one out on uh, Impala where it came out straight unless I had more stuff off. But this one come out. It's easy to take it out at like an angle, basically. You have better room. So, I'm working the holes off. And you see how I'm going in different camera angles? So, I got the head mounted the camera, the GoPro, and then I got a camera on a tripod. I'm trying, trying to be, start being more, uh, more angled in my videos instead of having like one camera position, basically, or just me with the head strap and everything just all wobbly. I'm trying to get everything crisp and clean as much as I can. I uh, wish I was in a shop so that way it could be better like better lit in certain dark spots that I can hit with a flashlight and you can clearly see it, whatever. But we'll get there one step at a time. So remember I said it comes out at, at an angle? Bam. It's going to be a little tight. That's how ready the jobs is. It's tight. Now next, I'm using uh, a hose clamp um, pliers basically. And what this do is basically lock the clamp. Uh, in place because it is like uh, tension loaded, springy basically. So this keeps it in position, and um, so that way I can just, uh, you know, get the uh, lower radiator hose off, separated from the radiator. But you see, I'm trying to use a pry bar to get it to move, and I don't care if I had damaged radiator only because I got a new radiator. So who cares, right? So it won't come off, so I need to just uh, put more force on the pliers itself to open, expand the uh, hose clamp. And once I do that, I should be able to move it back more because I believe that was my issue originally. And then um, usually radiator hoses, not a pain in the ass to come off if you wiggle it around a few times. And um, yeah, it'll just come off. Then you're going to be losing coolant, so make sure you got coolant. Never really heard of nobody doing a radiator job 
and not eating coolant unless you that dude that like to reserve your coolant. But I, I don't reserve coolant. I almost never do. And it depends on the situation on when I would do that. Um, unless I'm testing the fluid out or whatever. I don't know. Or I don't do it. I always put new fluid in. Unless the customer cheap as hell or something. But I always, if I take the fluid out and put new fluid in, that's just how I roll. So there is a clip, a horseshoe clip on the cooler line on the bottom, on the lower part, the lower cooler line, the transmission cooler line, to be precise. If you can see, you know, the little crevice right there, I left a little angle. Uh, you should see me trying to like maneuver it off. And I'll usually I pick at one side and want it budge up. Um, the, the side that's budged up, I uh, lift up on that more and then it'll come out. Then it's wiggle of the line that'll come out. Some transmission lines be a pain in the ass to come out, but if you keep wiggling, eventually it'll come out. You don't mess the lines up unless they leaking and you replacing them. That's a different story. So you're going to move those uh, lines out the way. Move the lower line and move the upper line. And um, there should be a 10 millimeter bolt. There's a bracket for, there's a, a hose not or AC line coming off of the condenser that's in front of the radiator. That's going to be in your way getting a radiator out. So if you can separate that uh, plastic uh, bracket, clip it, a bracket more so for the pipe. Um, you get that out, you Gucci. You can't get it out, you ain't Gucci. Oh, another thing I'm about to remove that I'm looking at uh, is uh, this uh, shield upper cover thing for the radiator. It's got two pushing clips screw pushing clip so I'm looking for a full up screwdriver to slowly back off the screw do not press into the screw lightly back it off because if you lightly back it off it'll come out if you push down and twist you will never get it out unless you got a pick and then you're probably going to mess it up mess it up or whatever that's all you need to do but I'm taking this shield off this cover off because that way I can get my arms at the bottom of the condenser because the condenser rests on it's not locked in it only just rests on the radiator so I'm just lifting off of it and, and you know unhanging it basically because it hangs on that's what I'm trying to say and uh, let me go ahead and spark my L uh, moving the battery cable um, out the way you didn't even have a battery tied down at the bottom so it's kind of easier to you know get this battery to move but I took the uh, you know power cable off and then I don't never just take power cable off on it I take both of them off. It just makes sense. And unless I should have just taken the negative off, but I needed that cable out of the way so the positive was coming off regardless. And you see how I lifted up at the bottom of the radiator came off. So now my other issue is that I got this uh, basically just torque bar or a strut bar. Probably a torque bar. I don't know. You're gonna take that off, basically. You don't know. Sometimes at the while, you don't know what Chevy is calling their parts or whatever. I mean, I got one factory in the Honda that's be uh, a, 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 a strut bar, basically, but it's on in the front of the motor, so it's probably a torque bar. And see how the radiator comes out? Once I got it out of the way, damn, that's it. It's tight. It's tight. And that's all to it. So I'm leak all the repair you got in your car questions. Make sure you get at me in the email as usual. Be sure to look out for my P.O. box. That one is coming real soon. I probably already have it in this video. Or maybe the next video. I ain't going to rush it. Next video, you'll see my P.O. box. Make sure you get at me on Instagram. I'm always on Instagram. And you can see right here, that's where the leak was coming from. That's how it'd be. It's either on the seams or it'd be a crack on the tank, basically. But uh, that's it. I'm leak all the repair. Hit the like button. And make sure you guys subscribe and I'll highlight y'all next video.